Well, Mike Zulo, welcome back in the house. Um, I do want to ask you some important questions before I do, though. I do want to read this thing just posted on Facebook. It's posted over at PNN News and Ministry website. It says, uh, who knew is the title. And it says, uh, now that Mike Zulo has released the hard copy evidence regarding the information about the CIA breaching Hawaii's Department of Health servers during the Obama birth certificate years, suddenly there's a sound of crickets from some of the top naysayers over the years. And then it says, where now is the ridicule, the mockery, the marginalization from these loud mouths during the investigation? Where are the charges of, quote, you guys have nothing? Man, how many times have you been told that, Mike? <laughs> how many, I can't oh, count. Oh, my gosh. You and I have been told we had nothing. I had to bite my tongue till it bled. And I'm not even the one that conducted the investigation. I feel so sorry for you, but, but you handled it. And then it goes on to say, so where are the lampooning jabs of Shepard Smith? Bill O'Reilly, Glenn Beck, Mark Levin. Man, I, I, I heard Mark Levin talk about, they didn't, I don't think they called our names, but I heard them talk about us because that's who they were talking about. Because we were the only ones that were you, you know, the only one that was the head of the investigation. And you and I were some of the only ones really unpacking the information. And so Shepard Smith was out there saying it was a bunch of junk. Bill O'Reilly, boy, he just slammed the whole thing. Glenn Beck, Mark Levin just nauseated me and still nauseates me. And then it goes on to say, and what about Peter Boyles and his clown-like irrelevant sidekick, Brian Riley? <laughs> Brian Riley used to be on the Colt Case Posse, and you've unpacked that here before. Um, what a clown act, Peter Boyles and Brian Riley. I, I, you and I went on that show, you remember? And, and we thought we were going to go on this professional radio show to give professional information, and it was a clown act. And then the guy was so nasty, he actually called us back to have us on to apologize and then never apologized. It, the guy's an absolute clown, in my opinion, Mike. But anyway, you don't have to speak to that. Um, uh, but anyway, and then it goes on to say, so where's CNN? Where's Fox? Where's MSNBC? Where's ABC, CBS, NBC, all of them? The silence will grow even more deafening as even more earth-shattering information is probably released in the upcoming months. Anyway, it says, so don't listen to the naysayers. They have always been bad wrong. <laughs> I thought that was a pretty good post, Mike. It was. It, it is. I mean, it kind of, uh, it kind of wraps it all up in a nice bow. Yeah, I mean, it really does. It's because, you know, you got all these people. It's almost, and I know I'm not accusing any of these people of working for the Obama, uh, you know, undercover, uh, you know, uh, provocateur agency, but, but it's almost like they were Obama bots, you know. They were just out there trash. I mean, Bill O'Reilly, to be this smart, and he is a smart dude. I, I've read a lot of books he's written. I mean, the guy's brilliant. But to be as brilliant as he is, for him to sit up there on Fox News saying, well, this whole thing, you know, his, there's a birth, there's a birth announcement in the newspaper. So that settles it for me. Really, Bill O'Reilly, an investigative reporter all of your life, the no spin zone, a, a birth announcement in a newspaper that has already been debunked. That settles it for you. You're not going to look at another piece of evidence. I wonder what Bill O'Reilly thinks about CIA trails into the Department of Health Hawaii, uh, servers. I, I, I don't know. Well, I wonder how he feels knowing he, he got set up by those same agencies that yeah. got him kicked off of Fox. Yeah, yeah. No the same player. Yeah, no doubt. Yes, absolutely. No doubt, no doubt. Well, anyway, let's redeem the time. Uh, I just had to get that out because I just I remember vividly going on the Peter Boyle show and thinking, what an idiot this dude is. And then, of course, his, his expert witness was Brian Riley. Oh, my gosh. Anyway, let me hush. I, I can do a two-hour show on that. Uh, but listen, uh, so so talk to us about this so-called, when, when our pile testified in court and said something about the some of the Montgomery information was junk information information and people have jumped on you for that Ex unpack that and explain the context well during the federal civil trial and again that wasn't a criminal trial this was a yeah. civil trial regarding immigration um, information was leaked from the sheriff's office regarding the Montgomery investigation and through some weird reasoning the federal judge wanted to hear all about this Montgomery investigation in open court. And as this was going on, now I wasn't there because I was a witness. I wasn't there when Arpaio was testifying. But I understand that they asked him what uh, the status was of the information that Montgomery had provided. And Arpaio had called it junk. And that raised a lot of suspicion about Montgomery. However, let me clear some things up. When I testified, 
I never testified about the birth certificate investigation. Mm-hmm. Matter of fact, I was never even asked about it on the stand. Mm-hmm. What your audience has to understand is, like I said earlier, there were two investigations now going on simultaneously in the identity theft information that Montgomery was bringing to us, the 151,000 people, at the same time conducting the birth certificate investigation. The information that Montgomery had provided, the 151,000 names and identities and personal information, all turned out to be accurate. Mm -hmm. It's it's real. I'm even in that database back in 2007. Mm Mm-hmm. Um, so that, that, that stuff became real, but there was other information that he provided that could not be 100% verified. So in line with the questioning and what the trial is about, Arpaio called it junk because it wasn't useful enough to the sheriff's office. Right. Because there were other things that Montgomery said that he was able to provide and he never did. And in Arpaio's judgment, that was junk. Right. However, When I was testifying, I testified that he had some information that proved creditable. Mm -hmm. And they never asked me about it, so I never (laughs) volunteered it. And as it goes on, there were things that Montgomery had in his possession that it was just impossible to have. And I'll I'll elaborate a little bit on those. Um, And again, that's what the NSA guys told you, too. Yes. Yeah. Montgomery had not only the 151,000 names, but he had banking information from persons across Arizona and across the nation. Now, the sheriff's office dispatched, I believe, 10 detectives to interview 40 people. And they came back with all verifying their personal information. However, the bank accounts associated with those, they could not identify. So that proved semi-fruitful for investigators. The banking information, the header information, their social security numbers, that was all verified. However, the bank accounts could not be. That's what stuck in Arpaio's mind. Mm -hmm. Well, I was out of the MCSO identity theft investigation for about six months, and it wasn't until I returned that I was looking at the information that was cultivated by those detectives. And as I was looking at that information, I began to notice something extremely suspicious. All the bank account information had big dollars in it, quarter of a million, 500,000. It showed real estate investments. It showed speculative natural gas and oil on every one of those. Mm -hmm. And that was really sending alarm bells up to me because not to take anything away from some people, but they didn't make enough money to even qualify for those type of events, uh, investments. Right. You can't just go in and get those. So well, I had information uh, prior, back in 2011, from an individual that was a whistleblower in the HSBC. We've got 45, 45 seconds, so wrap that up, and then we can continue on the other side. Go ahead. He was instrumental in bringing information about HSBC and money laundering and the way they did it. I sent that information over to him, and in about seven minutes, he got back on the phone with me, and he told me, Mike, that's a transaction log. He goes, that's a sweep account. I turned over hundreds of thousands of pages to the government with this same stuff. This is bank fraud. Yeah. Montgomery didn't even know what this was. Yeah. He just knew that they collected it. Yeah. Wow. And there's other stuff. I mean, we don't have time right now, but, right. but there's other stuff to go down. Wow. I'll tell you just what he had. Wow, wow, wow. Mike, listen, we are at the bottom of the hour, so it's a hard time out for national news, etc. But when we come back, we've got another whole segment, and we need to unpack some more information, some of it brand new, and some connections that are brand new. So are you up for that? Can you hang on? Sure. All right, That's good deal, fine. good deal. Folks, we'll be back right after this time out. Come back, Mike Zulo. Hey, listen, Mike, let's dive back into the Montgomery thing. So you, um, you, you put in context that comment about junk info. So there really wasn't junk info like it was just all a bunch of lies. There was just information that wasn't pertinent to what Arpaio was wanting to do and other information that Montgomery had said that he could deliver. The court started asking him about that. That's why he said, well, that's just junk to me. But you're, you've told us and proved to us and shown us now in many different ways that a lot of what Montgomery knew and presented was far from junk information, and that was also um, backed up by some of these guys from the NSA as well, right? Yeah, it was. And, Carl, let me just clarify something, too, with this bank fraud. What gets done here 
is bank accounts are opened under unsuspecting people's names, people that don't even have accounts in those banks. Right. And they layer those accounts, and they open up an account, then they open up a sub-account and another sub-account. And that's how they, they lose the trail of the money that's going in and out of those. Yeah. yeah, That's what was under each of these people's names. And we only sampled 40. We had 400 of those. Right. But we only sampled 40. And every one of them had the exact same replication of holdings. Yeah. Now, <clears throat> what even made that more creditable is in the information Montgomery gave us, he had a breach of a financial brokerage house, and I won't name I won't name them, and I won't tell you what state they were in. But he had that, and I literally sat there and I read the seized information, illegally obtained information, that actually had brokerage accounts, IRA numbers, dollar balances, social security numbers, and the broker's note talking about this person wants to move this money here, this person's complaining about this investment. I mean, these are detailed. Mm -hmm. And there was pages of, upon pages of those. Now, that's a breach that you have to have a reason to want to go there. Yeah. You can't just go there and get. Yeah. So Montgomery had that kind of information. Um, he had the password of a Microsoft executive that was so highly encrypted that that executive freaked out when we told him his password because there was just no way to get it. And he had big dollar balances in his own banking account. <clears throat> and then Montgomery also alerted Microsoft that they had been breached. <laughs> so <clears throat> Montgomery had a lot of information. Yeah. And Montgomery takes a lot of hits for some things, but he had this information. Yeah. And the information he had was voluminous. It was just page after page. He ended up turning over 600 million records to the FBI. Yeah. How many records, Mike? Say that slowly. Six, 600 million. 600 million records. Taken across the country. Yeah. So, see, folks, this thing is huge. It's called the hammer, and Montgomery was involved in it. He brought this information to the Maricopa County Sheriff's Office. Mike Zulo was involved in this up to his eyeballs. A lot of it was direct, related to the birth certificate investigation. That's where they came up with CIA trails into the Department of Health in Hawaii, into the Jakarta server in Indonesia, back to Washington, D.C., into the University of Hawaii history archives, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And then, of course, you've got all these other connections uh, to this birth certificate. And now you're being told, and it's being revealed to you, that, that it, it went so much deeper than that into the, into the lives of thousands of Americans, some of them probably into their personal stuff, Mike, but some of these people, as you were saying, were being used surreptitiously. Their names, their, you know, it, it, it wasn't their accounts, but yet this was being put in their names to launder money. Names and social security numbers, Carl, these people were victims two, three, four times over in the same event. Yeah, yeah. And that's not counting the information he gave uh, you about uh, voter rolls in Florida that were breached with this uh, during breached some elections? Bre breached, taken, and then uploaded with something else. Yeah, yeah. So they took the information out, and then they put the information back in after they played with it for a week. Are you at liberty to say what election that was? Or not? You know, to be honest with you, I don't even remember, but I think it's when, uh, uh, is it Alan West? I think he had, there was like a, he lost by 100 votes, and they found out there were more dead people voting. Yeah. I don't remember when that was. Yeah. Well, it, I'll talk to you offline about some things we talked about. But 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 anyway, I just but but the point is is that he made that pretty clear to you and showed you the evidence of that too of breaches into the Florida voting rolls. Hey, listen, let's do this, Mike. You you asked me to play this clip and I want to and I want you to set it up. I'm going to ask Mallory. Mallory, it's number two fifty three point B six, I think. Um, she's going to play that in just a moment. But set this clip up. It's you talking to Montgomery during the course of your investigation, and you gave him some hypotheticals about what could be done with this to destroy people's lives. So set that up, and then I'm going to get her to play it. It's a one minute clip, but I want your, I want our audience to be shocked by what he says. Set it up, Mike. Well, this was a uh, recording I made when we first met Montgomery. Look, he was unknown to us. And he has us in his home, and he's explaining to us the things that they did and the things that he partook of. And he started to explain to us the diabolical side of all of this. And I had asked him a question, what could you do with this information? And right. what you're going to hear in the clip is him describing to me right. what can be done with it. Okay. Mallory, play that clip. 
Let me ask you a question yeah. before we go any further. I'm a government. You know what? Through harvesting to protect the country, uh, yada, 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 yeah. we inadvertently collected it. Blah, 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 blah. It's innocuous information. Nothing can really be done with it. Mm -hmm. Social security number, credit card numbers, credit card numbers. What else could be done with this information? What could you do if you wanted to destroy the life of somebody with this information? I'd go into their email accounts and I'd start uploading emails. I'd send pedophile or picture links into their email accounts of pedophile kids. I'd say this guy's a pedophile. I would create a list of linked list. I'd upload into his email account all that. Then I'd download his email and say, look at all the websites this guy's been to. He's been to pedophile accounts. How could you financially destroy somebody with this? Oh, it's easy. I just go on this bank account mover. I go to the IRS. I I take the information out. Let's say I go. Let's say because I went into J. Edwards Morgan Stanley. I go into his account, take all the information, send it over to the IRS. Let him have it. Oh, really? He only claimed eighty-seven thousand this year. Well, here's all his bank account records. Oh, by the way, they're offshore. I don't know if you knew that. I, I, there's an endless way I can do it. There's there's so much data here. There's there's no way to protect yourself. All right, now, folks, endless data. No way to protect yourself. I can destroy anyone's life I want. I can turn them into a pedophile in a way that they cannot dispute it. They cannot debate it. They don't want to deal with it publicly because they, I can make it look like they've done it when they've never, ever even thought about it. I can make them look like a pedophile. I can destroy them financially with this equipment we have. Now, Mike, now when you look at the headlines... People dropping like flies because of sexual accusations, financial accusations, people that are afraid to speak, people that don't want to touch the birth certificate issue. They're afraid the uh, media that's been shut down, congressmen that have been compromised, judges that have been compromised. You don't think the hammer has been involved in any of that? I think the hammer is involved in everything. And I think now, you know, we're, we're seven years after Montgomery has gotten out of their employment. God only knows what kind of computer systems and breaching apparatus they have. Yeah. But they can manufacture anything against anybody at any time. Yeah, exactly. You, me, anybody. And I mean, and this, this is what I want you folks listening. This is what I want people to understand. This is what Mike Zulo, Sheriff Arpaio, they are heroes of our nation. They have been laying their lives on the line for five, six years, deeply involved in this. It started off just looking at a document to see if it was legal or not, and they wanted to be able to clear Obama. You've heard them say that many times. Go back years. That's what they started. And then when they couldn't, it got deeper, it got darker, it got nastier than the earth-shattering stuff, then Montgomery, then the, all the servers being breached, lives being destroyed, people being blackmailed, media shutting down, Congress shutting down. It's all over the birth certificate. And along comes Donald Trump wins the presidency, the guy responsible for the birth certificate, and now they're trying to crucify, destroy him with this fake Russian narrative. Mike, you knew how this hammer and everything else could be used to create a fake Russian narrative years before it hit the news. You and I, well, I knew it because you knew it, but you knew it through your investigation. Tell our folks about that. Both Montgomery and the fellows from the NSA um, both told me on separate events, separate of each other, that <clears throat> they have the ability to mask IP addresses when they hack them, and they can make it look like a foreign entity or service did it when, in fact, it was coming out of Washington or Virginia. That's what they told me. And, I, you know, I took that information. I sat with it. I had no reason to doubt it, but it wasn't germane to anything that we had. And then you start seeing on the news, we're, we're hacked here. And I remember, Carl, when you and I were talking, we were both on the phone going, this is going to be us. Yeah, it's This us. isn't going to be Russia. Yeah. We knew right? it. And take a look at, Carl, take a look at the dossier. I mean, this is mind-boggling to me. Anybody that knows anything about Donald Trump, they know he's a bit of a germaphobe. Yeah. And you're going to have a dossier, and you're going to say that he wanted Russian prostitutes to urinate in his bed? Yeah. Come on. This, this doesn't make any sense. That's the level that these people will go to. Yeah. Which That's is, what you're fighting. Which they is what? No bound. Yeah, we just heard Dennis Montgomery say it. That's the level. And he was so incredulous when you asked him, well, what could you do? You can't do anything with that. He said, what? What? I've got everything on you. I can destroy you. And there's nothing you can do about it. 
Now, Carl, that's why we ended up going to a federal judge. We couldn't turn to the FBI. We couldn't turn to the DOJ. We couldn't turn to the CIA. We couldn't turn to the DOD. We couldn't go anywhere. Yeah. Because those players involved would do everything they could to cover this up because it has to do with them. And they're still covering it up because it has to do with them. And and I'm convinced a lot of Congress that's there, the deep state, the, the reason they're not speaking to what you and I are speaking about today is because they're complicit. The media is not speaking because they've been complicit. Federal courts are not speaking because they've been complicit. The only man that will speak to it and wants to speak to it is the president of the United States. And they're after him uh, to destroy him. And you're, you know, you're taking on the president of the United States and look at the apparatus that's being used. It's phony intelligence. Like, I love it when they say 17 of our intelligence agencies have confirmed this. Yeah. You guys are the guys that are doing this to us. Yes. <laughs> and we're supposed to rely on that? I know. I mean, give me a break. I and know. who else is in there? CNN, MSNBC, Fox. all the players, ABC. Fox. They're all covering for this. Yes. Yeah, Bill O'Reilly was the biggest one at Fox covering for it. He was one of the ones saying that. Well, 17 different agencies have said, you and I are biting our lips because we're sitting back knowing that it's some of these agencies that are doing it. Well, Carl, go back to the time you and I would plant fictitious information on the radio show and, and, uh, and send emails back and forth saying there's going to be a big event coming just to sit back and watch and watch the birth certificate come up on those, those news yeah. agencies. Yeah. We would watch it. We yes. could time it. We did it. We did it right here on Freedom Friday a couple times over the last five years where we planned ahead of time to release information. We didn't lie to our audience, but we just didn't release the information like it was exactly going to happen. We were later accused of being liars, but we knew what we were doing. We released it just to see what would happen. And within 24 hours, Bill O'Reilly was out there doing cover stories about the birth certificate when nobody was talking about the birth certificate but us. No, and, and you know, listen, I want you to be really, I want to be really candid about this. You know, we were going to release information, except in the email correspondence, but I was emailing to you. Yep. Had nothing to do with what we were going to release or any dates and times. I put those in those emails because I knew they were monitoring everything I did because I was warned that they were doing that. Yeah. And then we would watch it come out on television. Yeah. You were Another hit job on the birth certificate. You were warned by some people very high up, so you trusted that information, and so we planted some stuff, and we watched it unfold right before our eyes. Doesn't get any clearer than that. Yeah. Let's take a time out, Mike, and then when we come back, I want you to... Well, I'm going to talk to you offline because there's a couple things here, and I'm going to let you pick which one you want to deal with. We're going to have to have you back, man. You've been on for an hour and a half, and there's still five or six stories we haven't even been able to unpack. Folks, well, let... Carl, I want, you, I want your audience to hear about Capolani. That, that, you know, okay, blows them that's up. what we'll do. We'll, uh, that's what we'll do. All right, let's get out of here, take this break. We'll be right back. Mike Zulu, talk to us. Let's redeem the time. Talk to us about Capolani. Capolani Medical Center, it's fascinating what happened in this investigation. After the second press conference, um, Jerry Corsi and I would only speak intermittently. You know, we were doing our thing now with this investigation. And uh, as fate would have it, about a year and a half after that, I'm on the phone with Jerry, and we're talking. And subsequently, I had gotten a telephone call from a very trusted individual who said that he had a personal friend who was an executive at Capolani. And this individual told me that there was no birth certificate information, no event information in Kapolan. So I kind of sat on that for a little while, um, and I'm having a conversation with Jerry. And I said, you know, Jerry, I go, I got this information. And based on the way we were received at Kapolani when we went there, I really believe these people were avoidant and hiding something. And I told him briefly about the phone call. He said, Mike, he said, I never shared this with you. He said, but I had information back in 2008 that there was a meeting that took place. And I interviewed one of the individuals that went on the hunt at Kapolani for the information. They were directed to find it. And he went on to tell me that not only was there no information there, but every hospital on the island was directed to do the very same thing. And those administrators met at a meeting, and no one had one iota of information See. on Stanley Ann Dunham or Barack Obama during that time frame or any other. See, folks, you're hearing well, this for the first time. Go ahead, Mike. 
I said to Jerry, I go, well, I just didn't tell you. You know, this is the cat and mouse game you play. Yeah. I didn't tell you everything you just told the other individual. So I said, Jerry, how do I prove you had this? He goes, Mike, I took copious notes. Within a minute and a half in my email box were his notes from 2008, outlining exactly what he told me. I got on the phone with my source and verified my source doesn't even know who his source was, yet he confirmed the very same information. Mm -hmm. Now, you have to look at that, and you have to really get to the conclusion that I have two independent sources, independent of each other, telling me the exact same chain of events. Then I take that and I look at the production of this document and Abercrombie and all his nonsense and who's saying it's there and who's saying it's not there. The fact that no one has ever seen it, the fact that no one has ever held it up, the fact that no one has ever taken a real photograph of it, the fact that no one has ever brought it in for any kind of an examination. I'm telling you, I firmly believe Kapolani Medical Center is guilty of in, in, in a conspiracy to cover the truth up about this complete fiasco they never had any birth information on him so much so that they pulled that fundraising letter down that i think i talked on your show last week all of a sudden this fundraising letter leaves after this challenge that it's not authentic now why would you take that off because what you were worried about is a federal investigation was being being threatened on fundraising fraud and they were worried that in that type of investigation if the feds walked in the door the first place they're going to want to go to is let's see the information that proves that he was born here. Yeah, and, and, and remind the people close. where that letter, that letter came from the White House claiming that Kapiolani was the place of birth for Obama. So they were going to take it at, and, and, and raise funds from it. Well, but, you know, Carl, there's another issue with that. The phony letter that was used in their advertisements was released before anyone ever saw the real one. Kapiolani fought not to release it. How do we know that's not a backdated letter that was released? Yeah. How do we know they ever they, they we don't know that they ever got a letter at any certain time? Right. We just know what Abercrombie is telling us. Right. The same guy who wants us to believe there's a long form when the chain of events and the timeline all say there is no long form. Right. When I've got individuals at Capolani saying that never happened in this hospital. Look, regardless, if I'm a hundred percent wrong on the birth certificate, if there's no birth records at Capolani, it's a fraud because Capolani can't be on the certificate. Right. <laughs> yeah, and they're on there, and they're not disputing it. Although, think of this, and we've said this before, it's only circumstantial, but you won't find a plaque on the wall in Capolani. You won't find a statue anywhere. You won't find anybody to say this is the official birthplace of Barack Obama. They will not claim it, even though their name is on his so-called birth certificate. Carl, the apartment house that he grew up in has a shrine to him mm -hmm. in the lobby, mm -hmm. and the hospital doesn't. Mm -hmm. You know, what does that tell you? Yeah. <laughs> it tells me a lot. It tells me a lot. Listen, you got about 30 seconds. Anything you want to uh, wrap up with? We're going to have you back. There's still so many stories we didn't even get to unpack. No, we're going to have to do the Mike Evans thing the next time, Carl. Yeah, that's, that's huge. That's good one. Yeah, that's another one. Well, listen, you've revealed a lot of new stuff and or old stuff that you've made new connections with, and you've answered questions from the naysayers. And, you know, and, and, and when I say naysayers, I mean, people had legitimate questions, and you did that. So I really appreciate that. Mike, Mike, thanks for being on today. Thanks for taking an hour and a half of your time to do this. Thanks, Carl. You have a great weekend. You as well. You as well. God bless you, Mike. We're going to have you back soon because there's more to talk about, and plus there will probably be more revelations coming up soon. Well, folks, of course, if anything breaks in this, like if there is an investigation, started, uh, congressional investigation, whatever, uh, we'll, we'll be keeping you. I mean, this is where you're going to hear it, Freedom Friday. Tell me, where else are you going to hear it? Okay? You know, InfoWars, you know, WND has done some stuff on it. But Freedom Friday, PNN News and Ministry Network, we're always talking about this. So if you want to stay on top of it, you got to stay tuned to us. We'll see you next Friday. Thank you for tuning in today. Go to callgalps.com tomorrow, click on anything that says Freedom Friday, and you can get this show. The Satanists wanted to install their own tribute a pagan idol on the Capitol grounds right next to the Ten Commandments. Billions around the planet are witnessing a world in the grasp of sadistic spiritual darkness. This unholy alliance has infected our governments, our religious institutions, and our societies. The world appears to be unraveling. But can the evil behind these dark supernatural forces be defeated? Is everything playing out just as the Bible predicted it will in the final days? 
At last, you can know the answers to mankind's most urgent questions and learn your destiny among today's events in the new, unprecedented work taking the prophecy world by storm. Gods and Thrones, Nakash, Forgotten Prophecy and the Return of the Elohim by best-selling author, former decorated law enforcement officer and senior pastor Carl Gallops. This changes everything. Available now wherever fine books are sold.